Hi, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create your own smart response to quizzes in Notebook. Uh, this is a great tool to use as a, an assessment tool, as an exit, exit slip, as a just to check your students' understanding of content in class. So let's get started. You can find the smart response quiz icon at the top toolbar. It looks like a yellow box with a check mark. So if you click on it, um, it will prompt you to sign in to an account. I would suggest signing in to your Google Work account. Uh, the reason for this is that you will need to give your students a class code to, to connect to your assessment that you've created. And uh, when you sign into that Google account, it will be a consistent class code that will not change. It will stay the same. And so that's why you need to sign in. So this is only a one-time thing. Oops, I put in the wrong email. This is only, like I said, this is only a one-time thing. So you only have to do this once. Great. It says you, you're all set. And so the next screen here is just to give your assessment a title and then you might have instructions that your your students will see once they log into your your assessment with your class code please answer all the questions alright click next and in this section you'll you will add your questions to your assessment it could be one question it could be as many as you as many as you as you want. So I'm going to add a few questions here, and you have two choices in types in terms of the types of questions you want to add. You can add multiple choice questions, and you can add short answer questions. Let's add one of each. So what is four times four? Um, you can also have the option to dropping a picture here if you want. You could bra click browse for an image and look for something on your computer that would uh, you would like to add to your question. So I'm going to answer some answers here. Um, 8, 4, 16, and 20. And right now it's set to answer as an opinion, so there's, um, there is no right or wrong answer, but I'm going to set it to C because that's the correct answer. And if you want, you can add um, answer choices here by clicking the plus button um, and I'm going to remove those because I only need, I only want four uh, what else you can also add images to as a answer choice so if you click on this icon here that has looks like an image you can look for a picture and um, include it as an answer choice alright so I think I'm good for this question so I'll click done so you can see that I have one question here Let's go ahead and add another question. This time I want to create an, a short answer. All right, what does a, how, well, let's see, how many sides does a square have? Right now this is an opinion question. If I want to add some correct answers, I can click the plus sign. And then I'll put four, so four. Or sides and then you can also do that if it's something like this where it might have multiple answers I would put um, maybe some of the possibilities for those correct answers for instance I put four sides and four because I know that there let me some students will just write four as well and I'll click done and then maybe I can put out a question at the end um, how, let's do actually a multiple choice. How are you doing in math class so far? And then I'm, I'm going to make this an opinion question. I doing great. I think I need more help understanding concepts. And then one could be, um, Doing great 
And the third one could be, um, I need serious help before or after school. And then I'll click done. And I have three questions here. I can rearrange the questions if I want, if I just click and hold on these. And I can delete questions by clicking the X. I can edit the question by clicking the pencil next to it. Um, and that's it. When I'm finished, I'll click finish. That's processing the quiz. Now you'll see that my quiz is on one slide. I can even add more slides if I wanted to. So it's on my first slide here. Now this is what sort of the, this is what it would look like uh, as you project it to your students. So your students will need a device to use to do this assessment. You can do it as a whole group, but I think the it'd be better if you had students do it on their own devices. So you'd click Start Activity to start the assessment to activate it, and your students on their device would go to classlab.com and to enter in your class code. Um, in this list here, as your students will sign in, ask the, their names will populate in, in this bottom here. So let me grab an iPad. So now I'm on the, an iPad here pretending that we're a student and uh, your students will enter in that activity code that you have on the board. You can display this code on your smart board or your projector. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in that at that activity code 56550709. They'll click enter. And then they'll here they'll enter in um, their name. I was just putting in their first name. Um, initials you can do as well. Click join the activity. And then right here on the student device it says the teacher hasn't started the activity so it's waiting for the teacher to click the start button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, let me go back to the student. This is what it says. Please, it has my instructions I had listed earlier. Please answer all the questions to the best of your ability. I'll click OK. And then this is where the student can start taking the assessment. And at the end, the student can review their answers, and when they're finished, they'll, they, can, they need to click Submit All Answers at the bottom, and then have them click Submit again, and great. That's, you'll know when that uh, student is done, when they'll see a great job at the end of their assessment. And on the, the smart board, this would be projected. It, this, uh, I didn't show you, but this, this circle here was, was um, being filled as I was answering questions and it says that 100% of the questions are answered. So that's when you know that everyone is done. You also see in this list here, this list of your students, what question they're on. For instance, um, if I was on question two, it'd be two out of three. Um, that's another way of checking when, you're, when your students are finished. At the end, when everyone is finished with their assessment, you want to click the end button on your teacher computer here and here it will show you um, the correct answer and also the number of students who uh, who chose each answer choice obviously I'm the only person so I, there's only one response here but if you had a whole class this might be all populated so you can go through the questions as a class and actually review answers so that's kind of great as a teaching tool and then uh, when you're finished you'll you might want to save uh, the results um, for your gradebook. So to do that you need to click on export results and then you can rename it um, as the title of your quiz and then you, know, you can even put the date. And here is an important fact you need to leave the .xlsx. I've found that if I've deleted that it actually turns the file into an to a text edit file. So you want to keep this extension at the end .xlsx so that when we save it it becomes a Excel sheet, Excel file. 
So I'll save that to my desktop. I'll click Save. And now if I go to my desktop, my math quiz is here with my with my results. And you can import this into your grade book if you want. See, so it shows the student, the, their grade, and the number correct, incorrect, and the responses. So that's pretty handy. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thanks very much. Have a great day.